The retina is the layer of the eye that's responsible for translating images into something the brain can understand. If you think of the eye like a camera with, with a lens and a mechanism to focus light on the film, the film in the camera would be the retina. Floaters are typically caused when the jelly, that's called the vitreous, that fills the back part of the eyeball separates from the wall of the eye or the retina. In those instances, sometimes the jelly itself can create a floater-like sensation that typically people describe as being a co cobweb or a spiderweb type pattern. In other cases, uh, little tiny floaters like black flies or fruit flies in your vision could be caused by blood or pigment liberated into the vitreous cavity with something called a retinal tear or detachment. As a general guideline, when you develop new floaters, you should be seen within the week by somebody qualified enough to examine your retina with some degree of detail. In some instances, this might be your optometrist if they're particularly interested in that sort of examination. In other cases, you may be required to come here and see somebody in the uh, emergency eye clinic or even see one of us, the retinal specialists, if uh, you were found to have some pathological reason that's caused that uh, symptom of floaters. Uh, typically, we go through a usual ophthalmic examination, which would include your vision and checking your visual field to be sure you're not missing any areas of your vision. We'd also want to do a complete slit lamp examination and something called indirect ophthalmoscopy, in which we look around the far edges of your retina with a handheld lens and a headpiece that rests on top of our head. When someone develops new floaters, they could certainly signify a normal part of the aging process, and that would be that the separation of the jelly from the back wall of the eye that we call a posterior vitreous detachment. However, in some instances, floaters can represent a very serious problem, and that would be something called a retinal tear, in which the jelly that normally fills the, the eye as it separates actually takes a piece of the retina with it and causes an opening, a communication between the vitreous cavity and the subretinal space. In some instances, that retinal tear itself might progress to become something known as a retinal detachment, at which time not only do you have an opening in the retina but that would allow fluid under the retina, but fluid itself begins to accumulate. And this, of course, is the most serious outcome that could represent a real potential for blindness. If caught early enough, floaters themselves might just represent a retinal tear. In a case of a retinal tear, we're typically able to either laser around it with a uh, laser here in the clinic or even freeze the area around the retinal tear with something called cryotherapy. In cryotherapy, we create a little ice ball that actually freezes the layers of the retina to the outside of the globe, per per creating a very permanent scar. Laser works in a very similar manner, only it's a little more precise and allows us to focus those areas um, with uh, more detail. Retinal detachments can be treated in several ways. If you're fortunate, they can be treated as in an outpatient setting. Sometimes, if it's a small enough retinal detachment, we might be able to laser around it. However, in most cases, it's a little too large for that. A typical retinal detachment, if the location is favorable, can be treated as an outpatient here in our clinic with what we call a pneumatic retinopexy. In that treatment, we create a scar around the retinal break that's led to the detachment and place a gas bubble inside the eye. The gas bubble rises up and plugs the hole, allowing the fluid to resorb and then protects the eye over a period of several weeks to even months allowing it to heal and scar down properly. Unfortunately, not every retinal detachment can be repaired that way. In more severe cases or instances where uh, a pneumatic retinopexy has failed, we progress to something called a pars plane of vitrectomy. In a pars plane of vitrectomy, we actually remove all the jelly that fills the cavity of the eye in order for us to provide an even larger gas bubble that will fill the entire eye. At the same time, we laser around all of the areas of the retina that are weak or broken, so we provide a firm scar to keep the retina on for the rest of your life. In some instances, we also perform something called a scleral buckle, in which we place a band of silicone around the outside of the eye. This band of silicone encompasses the eye and dents the wall of the eye in just enough that the retina is allowed to reattach. And of course, in many cases, we'll treat a retinal detachment with a combination of any of these approaches.
The scar that we create around the retinal break is very important. It's what seals it so that in the future there's no opportunity for fluid to slip under and lift the retina up. If you think of it like spot welding two layers of metal together, it would give you sort of the best analogy. Posterior vitreous detachment is an aging change that we see in all patients uh, over time. It can occur as early as your 30s if you wear fairly strong glasses to as late as in your 90s if you're a very, very lucky individual. Um, what happens in those instances is the jelly that normally fills our eyes is not replaced or repaired. So we're left in a position with uh, jelly that really hasn't changed much since about the age of two. Over time that jelly becomes stretched and eventually it compacts and as it pulls away it creates a new onset of floaters. The posterior vitreous detachment on its own is not dangerous in any way and those floaters that are created tend not to disappear with time unfortunately but do become less noticeable. After treatment of a retinal tear you can expect the eye to be tender for probably about the next two or three days. Uh, some people report headaches and I usually suggest that my patients go home and lie down after having laser. Overall, the, the laser itself doesn't treat the floaters, so the floaters persist, but it does provide some insurance against the retinal detachment occurring. Most patients who have laser for a retinal tear tend to not have any uh, visual problems as a result of it and tend to really not notice that they've had laser once their uh, initial symptoms have settled down. The outcomes of retinal detachment repair depend upon how serious the initial retinal detachment was itself. If the center of vision has already lifted off in something we call a macula off retinal detachment, our expectations of visual recovery are quite a bit lower than people that we get to before the center of vision has disappeared. That's why it's very important that if these symptoms develop, of a shadow or a curtain, which could be uh, a retinal detachment, that you're examined and treated prior to losing the central part of your vision.